Hey everyone. So there's been a lot of oh, there's been a lot of conversation around how you can use AI for copy creation, mainly on your website. So I thought I can take a bit of a review on how good it is currently and how we can use AI to our benefit. First of all, I wanted to introduce the helpful content update. This was a algorithm update launch coincidentally 3.5 months before we uh, became aware of ChatGPT 3.5. Coincidence, I don't really think so. Uh, Google were obviously ahead of the announcement. They wanted just to make it really, really clear to say that um, content that's created to game search engines won't really be rewarded and instead could be penalized. I think the important thing to say about this algorithm update was it was launched globally. So that means that its uh, impact was ubiquitous and gl uh, globally felt. Um, of which uh, generally it's classifier as to determining whether a piece of content was created by AI versus human was um, yeah, global as well as how strong the algorithm was, was always strengthening from that date. Second to which it's really looking to penalize low quality content. Um, and that means that really the quality raters, the Google uh, raters who are the humans, much like what John mentioned before, they're really kind of checking to see whether content meet the EAT factors. That means expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. And these are the kind of things that Google looks to reward as to helpful content. Um, that means that content has to be user-centric and has to be uh, useful and helpful for humans that are reading it. And that means for us today, that regardless of the author or the process that people follow to get there, um, the content always has to be useful and helpful. And that's the thing we should really have kind of front of mind when we're creating con content for our websites. Um, so that means there is an opportunity for AI assisted content creation, but we have to really kind of think, is this useful for a user? Um, and if it's not, we need to really kind of think of again as to how we've got there. And then finally, if content is created by AI only, you may as well expect that it will get penalized. It may not happen straight away, but uh, Google, as I'll show you in later slides, do slowly pick it up and the results do kind of slowly look to kind of diminish as to the um, progress you've made by using AI. Um, and the way that we can look to kind of um, get around that is by having really, really clear processes, checklists, uh, and uh, ways that we can look to integrate AI into the way that we do things to make sure that A, it's great for a user uh, and we'll look to kind of drive long-term results rather than anything short-term that could slowly get picked up and then penalized. Going on to the worrying thought about uh, penalties. Um, first of all, here is a case study by someone in the industry. They basically said, we're gonna use AI only uh, content moving forward. And we're gonna really see kind of, how good Google is at picking it up. You may have seen some of these before as the percentages when they can look to um, review content to see uh, how much a tool picks up on it being created by AI versus human. In here, the interesting thing is the tool shows that it's 22% likely created by a human. So it's created by AI. Um, it's interesting, it doesn't say this is 100% created by AI. So it shows again, tools aren't always 100% accurate. But getting into the, um, yeah, the more negative results. So it shows that Google takes a while to pick up that it's created by AI. But once it does, it really starts kind of penalizing it. And when I say penalizing it, it's not the same as it used to be you won't get a notification. Instead, your pages start becoming more invisible and not in the search results. So you can see here that the person's uh, pages start disappearing. And then sh shortly thereafter, their um, impressions and clicks start dropping off the face of the earth, only leaving those branded queries, which um, again, what we look to really do is drive kind of generic clicks to the site. Um, so the, the results really can do speak for themselves. I think an important point to make about this is beyond the, um, the downtime, it takes a long time to recover to where you once were. So creating AI only content should really be kind of thought about. Um, and a second review, and the one I kind of, oh, something I really like kind of going back to thinking about a user. So in here, um, Amelia basically compared uh, a search result versus uh, one that she's then used the tool to spin up using only AI. And she's really compared humans versus AI as to what is better for a user. So in here, you can see the five, four, four metrics, five metrics that she's used is A, the tool that I've showed you before. The second one is the word count. Now, historically, we've always thought about word count as something that you want to really promote to kind of do really well in SEO. 
uh, headings um, and as to how the page is structured, paragraphs, again, how it's structured too, and then the images in, ter in terms of the visual cues that are given to um, users. Now, comparing the two, you can see that um, generally kind of humans win. And the way that they look to do this uh, is, first of all, AI can be a little bit verbose or waffly. And I think that's not really well received by a user. When you're going to going through and feeling like you could explain things in a much shorter, more concise way, then that's really better for a, a human to read. Yeah, again, second of all, it gives crisp definitions. And that's exactly what we, when we're going through a web page, especially based on our attention getting less and less, we need really crisp de definitions. And then thirdly, and we're seeing this kind of more and more, that AI can be s somewhat less coherent of which it kind of goes around the houses and explaining something when actually when we're on a web page we want it to be explained really can head on as to can how we can look to follow instructions so i think kind of uh, ai versus human in this case for the user humans are better but i think we've kind of compared ai versus humans very very um yeah clearly today but i don't think that's where the opportunity really lies it's not ai or humans instead it's how together we can look to accelerate our processes and really win so i wanted to kind of basically share with you processes and how we can look to do that. I think that the important thing to share on this is where you're doing things that aren't in the search index, that's exactly where you can use AI really, really uh, usefully. Uh, and I think it's important to say that humans or we as your SEO team are responsible for the results that are indexed. So here is our, kind of, um, our content process. And I kind of wanted to share with you kind of five steps as to how we're trialing integrating AI into the way that we're doing things. And I've kind of put in here some kind of useful prompts that you can follow just to kind of show you the output of this. So the first one really is when ahead of a brainstorm, we're looking to create some really clear summaries so we can pull on people in the four corners of the agency to come to the brainstorms with the same kind of brief as what we're looking to achieve. So we can create these uh, brainstorm documents with these kind of useful AI helped um, summaries and that really kind of gives an overview as to the strategy that we're looking to execute. So second to that we're looking to really kind of create some really clear ideas um, and by taking human ideas and then extending them using uh, chat GPT we really look to kind of expand the amount of ideas that we've created and then we pass them through our tools to see which ones have the most search volume and then we look to refine from there. So this really helps us kind of expand our creative vision Third to that, obviously, we look to create briefs for content writers and others uh, who are looking to kind of build out those ideas into kind of real clear uh, page briefs. We look to kind of take these and expand on them. I think what AI is amazing at doing is improving the quality of these briefs and making sure that they are really consistent uh, and yeah, repetitive and clear. Um, so yeah, uh, we're using them for briefing more and more. The fourth, and very similar to what John mentioned before, in terms of taking corpuses of text and then moving them into different formats, formats that we know that Google favor. Uh, again, it's very, very useful in terms of more of the um, heavy lifting in terms of the documentation. So that's really kind of looking to take text and move it into bullet points, tables, and thinking about the different formats and layouts that are kind of promoted in search results. The fifth one is in terms of QA. Uh, I think this is um, somewhere that I've kind of really found it super useful, in which we can basically get um, ChatGPT to kind of mark our work, point out for any kind of human error, um, American spelling into UK spelling, as well as kind of anything that is glaringly obvious because yeah, human error does basically get a bit tired after a while. So that's where we can look to work collaboratively with AI who essentially, essentially doesn't have a, a low attention. So that really looks to enhance our output in basically uh, making sure that everything we do is of high quality. So kind of as a bit of a recap, and I wanted to kind of stop at this point and say the images behind those different, um, the different boxes are created by Dali, the image classifier. Some of them are a little bit shaky in terms of quality. Um, it, they're actually using exactly what's in the box. Um, so just as a final thought, the hu humans and AI can create a much better performing future, but in isolation, um, currently the results are a little bit dubious uh, in favor of just AI. That being said, we're testing it consistently to see what's working. And equally, we're keeping a very close eye on to Google's announcements because by nature of AI being so close to the center of their stack, they're gonna wanna be promoting that as well and not saying it's just gonna penalize content. 
That being said, we have to refer to what the uh, algorithm rewards in terms of EAT, and that's by following the Google documentation that's in circulation currently. We have to th thoroughly QA, uh, making sure that everything is passed through a human to make sure that it's of high quality before we look to index it, uh, because essentially we are responsible for your results. Thirdly, we really have to look to integrate the AI benefits into our human processes, and that's really around concentration and quality. Um, and then finally, we have to really take a test to learn approach as to what's working and keep a real eye as to kind of the benefits that we can get by taking yeah, this approach. So yeah, I hope I kind of recapped as to how we're looking to build this into our processes for content creation. Thank you.